to everyone. Uh, it's really, uh, I see that auditorium is relaxed, but some of them now feeling a little stressed. So um, I was just shuttling forward and back, and, and here we go. I would love to share uh, one of our research we have made with uh, Professor Agnet Maranavicene and one of my colleagues, uh, Yulia Radanova. So uh, just, I know that we have very short in time. I'll try to show the example how to stick <laughs> to those 15 minutes. So first of all, why mandatory and why family mediation? Uh, some of you probably know that we have uh, mandatory family mediation in Lithuania since 2020. So it's um, about three years uh, uh, we're uh, trying, testing uh, our new Lithuanian model. And, uh, uh, well, you know, we had a chance to make an ex-post evaluation that Agne was mentioning uh, a year ago. So, uh, the results of this ex-post um, research showed that uh, Lithuania, even having a uh, little different uh, mandatory mediation model, as we call it, liberal, still is reaching the results set in the European direction um, to reach um, access to justice, um, to boost our mediators' uh, profession, and so on. And what we have that, uh, uh, what Giuseppe was telling about this breaking point, that having mandatory mediation, a uh, little different one, still we are reaching that uh, approximately about 47% of mediations are finishing with the settlements. And counting uh, the family mediations, we are approximately reaching 18, 90% of um, cases are going to mediation rather than go to court. So we are very close at this breaking point. And our question was, okay, so if we are uh, doing this in Lithuania and we see that it's uh, quite successful, so are we really the rare country in the European Union who has uh, tried to do the same things? Except, of course, Greece, because we know that Greece uh, has implemented the mandatory family mediation more or less at the same time. So we did this research, tried to understand, is the introduction of mandatory mediation in family disputes um, an emerging trend in the European Union. So we have uh, a saying in Lithuanian, uh, hidden like a needle in a haystack. It means that, uh, you know, uh, we can try our best to look for something, but it's most impossible to find it if we do not know what we are looking for. So what we were looking for? Uh, first of all, we uh, returned to those um, classifications of mandatory mediation models, uh, which uh, suggests as a doctrine and some of the EU studies. So I'm sure that uh, most of you are aware of this, but uh, doctrine offers four distinctions. So it's a categorical mandatory mediation model, which simply means that uh, uh, Disputants are referred to mediation by the law. A discretional mandatory mediation model, which uh, the power vests to refer parties to mediation uh, for judges, and it's treated that they're the most suitable to evaluate individual cases and to refer parties to try to find an amicable solution. Uh, then we have quasi-mandatory mediation model, which is uh, Let's say um, still we have voluntary element in it, but uh, there are some additional incentives or sanctions, most of the time it's financial ones, uh, which uh, motivate parties more to try mediation um, than pure uh, voluntary model. And contractual mandatory mediation, but I will not spend time on this because for family cases it's not so relevant. And uh, the other distinction what was proposed in uh, some of the EU studies, it's more or less the same, but just a little different. So here we have a poor voluntary model where parties uh, have their own right rather to decide to go to, to mediation or not. Uh, another one is uh, when um, uh, Parties are encouraged to have uh, records to mediation with offering them some incentives, again, or sanctions. So it's very close to a quasi-mandatory mediation model. Uh, then another, the third one, is referring parties not to mediation, but to initial uh, mediation informational session. And the last one is full uh, mandatory mediation, when parties are not forced, of course, to have any kind of settlement, but still they are expected to participate in a whole process of the mediation. So we were trying to find any signs of these models uh, in all of the EU countries, and we did a little research. And we have another saying in Lithuania, search as you seek for a bread and you will find it. 
The bread is Lithuanian lasagna, so if we're about the food, let's, let's continue on that. So uh, how we were looking for it? We made um, um, interviews on Zoom or via emails. Uh, we were approaching 27 professionals from all EU countries, uh, those who has at least five years of uh, their experience in the mediation field, and we analyzed those data with the Max CUDA program. And here, here you can see the questions uh, which were asked uh, for the interview. So basically, it's very simple. Do you have? any kind of mandatory med mediation model, please describe it. And if not, maybe there is some kind of discussions, you know, uh, regarding it, maybe some plans to, to implement it in the future. So what do we have? Uh, basically, we have the result that um, 20 countries from the 27 of EU countries do have uh, signs, let's say, of uh, mandatory mediation models. In some cases, for example, like in Lithuania, we do have a categorical model where all family mediation cases, except those with uh, elements of uh, um, domestic um, violence, are going to mediation. In some countries, those provisions of um, mandatory mediation models are referred to uh, some kind of certain family disputes. Usually it's related to ch uh, children uh, matters, custody, and, and so on. And in some countries, uh, there is no explicitly uh, said that uh, those provisions are available for family mediation, but generally for all civil cases. So it seems when we were looking for a needle, it appeared much bigger than we expected. So just to understand all of you how the map of um, those models uh, looks, here you can see some slides. So talking about categorical mandatory mediation model, we see that six countries uh, in the EU have uh, already um, applied it. I will not uh, go deep because I know that my colleagues from Greece and Bulgaria will tell you more about this, but we do have, uh, we proudly can say we do have this in Lithuania, and also Croatia, Malta has um, implemented uh, mandatory mediation models. Um, Italy, it's like very strict because, because it's applied only to family business cases. And recently, I think a year ago, since last September, Estonia has a very interesting uh, model because it's not like written uh, that all cases of family mediation can, should go to mediation. Uh, but uh, what they say is uh, before, uh, up when applying to the court, uh, parties must provide proof that they have finished mediation or conciliation. So the parties can choose, and if they do not provide it, the judge accepts the case, but then he sends the parties to the mediation. So before the court, they have ability to choose between mediation and conciliation. When they go to court, the court prefers mediation to conciliation. Uh, then we go to a uh, discretional model. Again, it's uh, the one where judges are referring parties to mediation. And here you see the full list. I put the Bulgaria in the end because I know the law is already accepted. It's not like in the, uh, it will be valid since uh, July of this year, uh, next year, but, uh, but still it's on the list. So what do we have here? That uh, it's very close to, let's say, this opt-out uh, model because even the judges are referring, they are some go scanning the cases and thinking that this is a possible chance, uh, the parties have a chance to find settlement agreement. Still, they have a quite easy possibility to opt out if they are not willing to do it. Uh, quasi mandatory mediation model. Here we have uh, uh, four countries. Again, it's um, maybe not, you know, not the 100% um, the map of this quasi mandatory mediation model because it's very hard to indicate. And on the other hand, uh, most of the sources who were um, t sharing that they do have uh, this, uh, this model, it's uh, more or less very formal because it's very hard to actually understand when the parties, for example, are not engaging into the mediation uh, being an honest or they are participating in there with a bad faith and so on. But still we have those provisions and most of the times they are re related to court sanctions, for example, yeah, if, if the party refuses from mediation, uh, it faces some uh, penalties. And for example, in uh, Germany, there is 
not related with the monetary issues, but some extra procedural burden where the party has to explain before applying to court, uh, have they tried mediation? And if not, explain why. So it's like, you know, you cannot just say that I didn't, I haven't, I don't like it, but you need to explain for the future just judge uh, why those uh, decision was made. And here we have a voluntary ma uh, family mediation model plus incentives. Why is that so? Because uh, at this time, and probably today, this is uh, again valid, that Derm Denmark is the only country that has a pure voluntary model without any, any incentives uh, uh, in their country. Hopefully, uh, it will change soon and, and soon we'll have the, all countries on the map. And the other countries are offering some kind of incentive, in, uh, incentives for the parties. For example, the judges are explaining mediation, offering to, to participate there, or inviting to participate in a free mediation session. Not obliging, but just offering and explaining. Uh, there are some cases where a uh, state uh, provides some support offering free mediation services or, for example, if I remember correctly, Poland and some other countries has um, uh, special requirements for the family mediator. So when you apply to the mediator for a family case, you understand that this mediation has more maybe trainings or co uh, qualification um, specifics uh, rather to any other civil uh, mediator. So, uh, general overview, what do we have? That uh, we confirmed our, let's say, presumption that uh, uh, mandatory mediation is really a trend in a family cases in Europe. And here you can see the total map, how it looks. Some of the countries are applying one model, some of the countries are merging it and using hybrid models. So most of the times any categorical or discretional model is combined with some incentives or sanctions. And what are the trends exactly? So in most cases, mandatory mediation provisions are applied to child-related uh, disputes. Uh, discretional model is the most popular. So when we ask, um, we trust our judges to, to evaluate the cases and to refer parties to the mediation. Uh, it is increasing trend to use categorical model. Uh, where we set the, those provisions in a law and refer parties to the mediation or uh, uh, mediation informational session. Of course, we use hybrid models. And the other finding is that those pure models enriched in the doctrine or EU studies is very rare. So we came to the conclusion, so maybe some kind of new classification is, is really needed uh, within the EU. Uh, because some, like, the, 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 research, the results of the research showed that these um, models uh, they ev uh, evaluated. Uh, each country adopted uh, their own measures, you know, scanning their national context and probably um, relying to some uh, legal regulations they do already have. So the classification of mandatory mediation models really needs to be de developed further. This is uh, the proposal uh, what we came with the conclusions in our research, but you know, it's just again, f first scan proposing to, to somehow resort and reclassificate those mandatory mediation models uh, in the family cases, but definitely we should look above all this and maybe do the better researches in the uh, field of all civil cases and try to arrange those uh, classifications. So again, uh, this shows that we have a positive uh, trend uh, in the family mediation. If uh, all those numbers uh, regarding EU studies are showing us quite low results, so 1% of the cases are referred to mediation, if we dive deeper into the <clears throat> into the family matters, we see that situation is uh, quite difficult. So it means the countries are following the, the rec recommendations, but they are just uh, you know, using this boutique style, they are, they are trying to find their own ways. And, uh, and sometimes when we asked our interviews, do we have those mandatory mediation provisions? Most of the cases, they said, no, no, we don't have it any in our country. But when we asked to maybe find some kind of provisions in the civil code, civil procedure code, or, or any codes related to family um, legal regulation, they, are, they were saying, oh, yeah, we have this kind of provision. 
provision, this kind of provision. Yes, and the judges can refer parties to the mediation. So again, uh, if we look at all this very um, strictly, uh, knowing what we will find, we will definitely do it. And hopefully, uh, this will boost maybe some of your ideas to make um, another researchers and understand that it's not so hopeless. We're doing quite well. The process is slow, but that's why we are here for, just to find some new ways and approaches to do it. So, thank you.